Have you ever wondered why no matter how hard you try, you just don't seem to fit in with the world around you? Why do the paths that seem so easy for others feel so out of place for you? In today's message, we're going to uncover a profound truth about your life as a chosen one, a truth that will reshape how you see yourself, your purpose, and the world around you. We'll share a powerful, real life-changing story about a man named Jack who allowed the pressure of fitting in to cause him to go through hell on earth. What happens in this story will shock you. We'll pray a powerful prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. So stick around to the end and open up your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. And also, we encourage you to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to help spread the word of God. My friends, let's clarify what this truly means. Standing out doesn't mean you're better than anyone else or more deserving of God's love or blessings. It means you've been uniquely designed by God for a specific purpose that doesn't conform to the world's expectations. You were created to fulfill a calling that only you can accomplish, and that often means walking a path that looks different from others. It's not about superiority, but about embracing the distinct role God has given you in His plan. Today we'll explore 10 profound reasons why that uniqueness is so powerful and necessary for your divine purpose. Reason number one, your identity is rooted in Christ, not culture. Beloved, let us never forget that our identity as chosen ones is not dictated by the ever-shifting sands of culture. You see, the world will always attempt to label you, to define you by its fleeting trends. But our identity is not anchored in what is trending. It is rooted in what is eternal. In a society where validation is sought through likes, follows, and the applause of men, we must remember that our worth is not measured by human standards but by God's unchanging truth. As the Word of God declares in 2 Corinthians 5.17, If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone and the new is here. Your identity is found in Christ, not in the labels the world tries to stick on you. Now I want you to reflect on this because it's easy to get swept up in the current of culture, to believe that you must conform in order to belong. But as the chosen ones, you don't belong to this world. Romans 12, 2 reminds us, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your identity is already established in Christ. You don't need to seek approval from a world that doesn't even know the fullness of who you are. When you stand rooted in God's truth, when you allow your identity to flow from His Word and His love for you, you won't chase the validation of men. You'll rest in the security that you are a child of God, beloved, accepted, and purposed for greatness. It's essential to ground your sense of self in the eternal truth of who God says you are, because the world's trends will pass away, but His Word will never fade. So let your identity reflect the light of Christ, unshaken by the pressures of culture. Reason number two, standing out glorifies God, not self. Standing out, my brothers and sisters, is not about being seen. It's about making God known. Oh, somebody needs to hear that today. We are not called to stand out so that we can gather praise for ourselves. We are not set apart so that we can boast about our accomplishments or glorify our own names. No, we stand out for God's glory. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see, when you stand out in humility and obedience, you are a living testimony of God's goodness, His grace, and His power at work in your life. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Him. The distinctiveness of the Chosen Ones isn't a badge of honor for us to wear. It's a reflection of God's kingdom, a signal pointing others to Him. And when you choose to walk in the light, when you choose to stand out by living according to God's ways rather than the world's, you are advancing His kingdom. You're showing others what it looks like to be a child of God in a world that is hungry for hope, thirsty for truth, and desperate for purpose. 
Philippians 2.15 tells us that we are to shine like stars in the sky as we hold firmly to the word of life. That's your call. You're not shining for self-promotion. You're shining for kingdom promotion. And let me tell you something. Standing out in this way pleases God. Oh yes, it does. When you choose to be distinct, when you refuse to blend in with the patterns of this world, you are saying to God, Father, I choose you over everything else. And that is the kind of obedience that moves heaven. So don't be afraid to stand out. Don't be afraid of being different. Let your life be a reflection of his glory, knowing that as you lift him up, he will draw all men unto himself. It's not about recognition. It's about representation, representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in everything you do. And when you do that, God is glorified. Reason number three, fitting in leads to spiritual compromise. Beloved, when you hunger to be accepted by this world, you must be cautious, for the subtle whispers of compromise begin to creep into your soul. The enemy knows that societal pressure can be one of his greatest tools in leading the chosen ones astray, causing you to bend, fold, and ultimately break under the weight of the world's approval. You see, the desire to fit in might seem innocent at first, laughing along with a joke that goes against your values, attending gatherings that pull your spirit away from God, or entering places like nightclubs or unholy events that begin to chip away at the purity of your walk with God. These small compromises, beloved, are not small at all. They are strategic attacks from the enemy designed to erode your spiritual foundation, leaving cracks for doubt, sin, and confusion to seep in. The enemy's goal is to make you question your commitment to God by normalizing the things of this world, making what's profane seem acceptable and what's holy seem out of place. But let me remind you today, you are not of this world. Fitting in is a deception that causes you to exchange the riches of eternal glory for the cheap applause of temporary acceptance. The cost of fitting in is far too high when the prize is your soul, beloved. When you compromise your values, you are compromising the very essence of your identity in Christ. And so, I urge you today, remain steadfast in your faith. Refuse to bow down to the golden calves of culture, the idols of acceptance, and the allure of belonging where God has called you to stand apart. Yes, it may mean standing alone, but hear me. Standing alone for God is standing in the fullness of His favor. Reason number four. Your difference is your strength. You see, God doesn't make duplicates. He makes originals. And when He crafted you, He gave you a perspective that others may not have. He gave you experiences that others may not understand, and He endowed you with talents that may not fit in with the world's standards, but they are heaven-approved. God knew what He was doing when He knit you together in your mother's womb. Psalm 139.14 says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. That means everything about you, your mind, your voice, your story, and your spirit is fearfully and wonderfully made to serve a purpose beyond human comprehension. Don't spend your life trying to suppress the parts of you that don't fit in with the world's expectations. Your difference isn't a limitation, it's a launching pad. Embracing what makes you different is the key to unlocking the fullness of God's plan for your life. Look at Moses. He had a speech impediment, but God used him to deliver a nation. Look at Esther, an orphan, but God used her to save her people. Their differences became their strengths when they surrendered them to God. When you stop trying to blend in and start standing out as God has called you to, you step into the divine plan with power and authority. So, chosen one, embrace what makes you different because it's that very thing that God will use to impact this world. Reason number five, God's blueprint doesn't include conformity. Beloved, there is a tension in the life of the chosen ones, a tension between who society says you ought to be and who God has divinely created you to be. 
You see, God's blueprint for your life is not a duplicate of the world's expectations. It's a master plan, custom made and crafted by the hand of the Creator. God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are far beyond human comprehension. Isaiah 55 9. God calls you to break free from the expectations of men, to reject the narrow definitions of success, fame, and acceptance that the world offers. Romans 12 2 tells us, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is the call of the chosen to embrace the transformative nature of God's plan and lean into the path of being set apart. The very fact that you don't fit in is a signal that God's purpose is greater. Conformity may bring comfort, but it will never lead to greatness. When you lean into God's blueprint, you will find that it requires courage, it demands faith, and it commands obedience. Being set apart is not a burden. It is the foundation of your calling. God didn't call you to be a reflection of the world. He called you to reflect His glory. He called you to be a city on a hill, a light that cannot be hidden. Don't be afraid to break the mold, because God is using you to create something that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Reason number six. The world will misunderstand you. Chosen ones, let me tell you this plainly. Walking in the fullness of your calling means embracing misunderstanding. Oh yes, the world will not understand you because you are not meant to fit into its systems. But hear me clearly, this misunderstanding is not a curse. It's a reflection of your divine assignment. Jesus himself warned us in John 15, 19. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Your rejection by the world is proof that you have been accepted by God. Too often we are tempted to shrink, to dull our shine, to mute our message just to avoid the criticism and confusion of others. But beloved, you were not called to walk a path of ease. You were called to walk a path of purpose. The misunderstanding you face is evidence that you are operating under a higher order, a divine mandate. Look at the life of Jesus who was misunderstood, mocked, and even crucified, not because he was wrong, but because he was right. The peace you need doesn't come from the applause of people. It comes from knowing that God is pleased with you. Spiritual strength is not the absence of criticism. It's the ability to walk in peace when criticism comes. Jesus knew this and so must you. If they misunderstand him, they will misunderstand you. But blessed are you when people insult you and falsely accuse you for his sake. Matthew 5:11 to 12 Stand firm in your identity, for you are walking the path that he has laid before you, even if the world can't comprehend it. Reason number seven, spiritual growth requires separation. Ah, and here lies one of the most difficult truths for the chosen ones to accept. Spiritual growth requires separation. My brothers and sisters, you cannot grow into what God has called you to be if you are constantly trying to fit in with what the world says you should be. The deeper things of God, the higher revelations, the spiritual maturity you seek will only come when you are willing to separate yourself from the patterns of this world. 2 Corinthians 6.17 speaks directly to this. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. There is a divine elevation that only happens in the place of separation. When you stand apart, you allow yourself to stand under the flow of God's anointing, and it is in this sacred space that God pours out revelation wisdom, and strength. Trying to fit in leads to spiritual stagnation. It dulls your sensitivity to the Spirit and robs you of the clarity God wants to give you. But when you embrace the call to be set apart, when you accept that separation is a necessary ingredient for spiritual growth, you position yourself for divine elevation. The chosen ones are not called to live in comfort, but to grow in Christ. Growth in God requires pruning. Sometimes He cuts away relationships, habits, 
environments, and even mindsets that are no longer serving his purpose in your life. This separation is not meant to isolate you, but to consecrate you. As you are separated from the world, you are drawn closer to God, and that intimacy with Him becomes the source of your strength, your wisdom, and your power. Understand this, beloved. Standing out is not an option. It is a requirement for the chosen ones. You are called to be holy, set apart, not just for your sake, but for the sake of God's glory being revealed in your life. Reason number eight. Authenticity over approval. Your authenticity is more valuable than the approval of society. When you chase after the applause of people, you exchange divine purpose for temporary praise. Oh, they'll clap for you today, but the same people who clap for you will turn their backs on you tomorrow. Don't let the fickle approval of man dictate your destiny. God did not call you to live for the world's acceptance. The truth is, chosen ones, when you are truly walking in God's purpose, you will face rejection. But can I tell you something? Rejection is not a sign of failure. Rejection is often a confirmation that you are on the right path. John 15, 19 reminds us, If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. There's power in standing authentically to who God called you to be. When you stop seeking the world's approval and start seeking God's approval, your spirit begins to grow. Your peace becomes unshakable because it is no longer tied to the opinions of others. Your strength becomes immovable because it is anchored in God's purpose for your life. Authenticity isn't about doing what's popular. It's about doing what's right. Chosen ones, your validation must come from heaven, not from man. And when you embrace your authenticity, you begin to align yourself with the fullness of God's plan. You don't need to fit into the world's narrative. You are the narrative that God is writing to show His glory in the earth. Your distinctiveness is not a flaw. It is your divine advantage. Reason number nine. Fitting in can dilute your spiritual power. When you bend to the patterns of this world, you weaken the authority that God has given you. Scripture says in Romans 12, 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The moment you begin to imitate the world, you disconnect yourself from the unique power source that is designed specifically for you as a chosen vessel of God. You see, fitting in is easy. It requires no faith, no boldness, no distinction. But when you stand out, you activate the supernatural flow of God's anointing in your life. Your power lies in your distinctiveness. It is in your differences that God's presence shines the brightest. You cannot walk in both the approval of God and the acceptance of the world at the same time. You can't chase after the accolades of people and still expect the fullness of God's favor. When you seek validation from man, you rob yourself of the divine authority you've been given to shift atmospheres, break strongholds, and fulfill your destiny. Listen to me now. Fitting in this world will cost you more than you can afford. It'll cost you your peace, your joy, your purpose, and ultimately, your spiritual power. We are called to set the standard, not follow it. We are called to be in the world, but not of the world. You are God's ambassador, and the moment you start looking like everyone else, you lose the distinction that makes you a kingdom carrier of that power. Reason number 10. Spiritual Courage in Isolation My friends, we must be vigilant because fitting in can lead to spiritual isolation from God. When you chase the world, you begin to distance yourself from the Creator. Instead of being set apart, you blend in and suddenly the voice of God seems quieter while the noise of the world grows louder. Remember, no one can serve two masters. Matthew 6, 24 Beloved, you cannot please the world and please God at the same time. Standing firm in your spiritual identity means having the courage to say no when everyone else is saying yes. 
It means refusing to sacrifice your godly values on the altar of social convenience. And let me tell you, when you refuse to fit in, when you decide to stand for Christ no matter the cost, God honors that decision. He will shield you, sustain you, and reward you. Beloved, there will be moments when your refusal to fit in will isolate you from the crowd, from friends, even from family. You may feel forsaken, left out, or misunderstood. But hear this truth. God never forsakes those who are willing to stand apart for His sake. In fact, it is in these moments of solitude where God draws you closer, where He builds your spiritual muscles, where He molds you for higher callings. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 41.10, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Take this powerful, life-changing story as an example of why we should never try to fit in. Once upon a time there was a man named Jack, a devoted husband to his wife Mia, and a loving father to his precious little girl Chrissy. Life was good for them. Jack had a steady job, his marriage was solid, and his daughter adored him. He was a man of faith, always putting God first in his home and doing his best to live righteously. But life, as it often does, has a way of testing even the most faithful hearts. Jack's co-workers had always been a little distant, mostly because Jack never accepted their invitations to hang out after work. They would head to bars or clubs, and Jack, with his heart anchored in God, always declined. Nah, I'm heading home to my family, he would say with a smile. But one day, whispers began. Jack's co-workers started questioning him more boldly, mocking him for never joining their fun. They would laugh and ask, What's wrong, Jack? You're too good for us. You think you're better than us because of your religion? Come on, live a little. Their words cut deeper than Jack expected, and for the first time, he felt ashamed of standing out. He began to feel isolated, misunderstood, and before long, the pressure became too much. One evening, after weeks of taunts and jabs, Jack caved. He told himself, It's just one night. I'll go out with them this once, and they'll back off. But as often happens when we compromise our values, one night turned into two, then three. And soon, Jack found himself spending more and more time with his co-workers. Mia, always the observant wife, started to notice the changes in Jack. He was coming home late distant, less involved with Chrissy and certainly less engaged in the faith that once grounded him. Jack, Mia said one night, her voice filled with concern. I don't know what's going on with you, but you haven't been the same since you started hanging out with these people. You're not yourself anymore. Jack, already on edge, lashed out at her. His words, sharp and cold, were nothing like the man Mia had married. Worse still, little Chrissy overheard their argument, and for the first time in her young life, she saw her father as someone she didn't recognize. What Mia didn't know was that Jack had fallen into a deeper pit than anyone could see from the outside. His nights out with his co-workers weren't just about socializing. He had begun seeing someone else, a decision that gnawed at his soul, but felt justified in the haze of fitting in. He convinced himself it was harmless, that he wasn't doing anything wrong. But deep down, the man who once stood firm in his faith was drowning in guilt. As the months dragged on, Jack's lies grew more elaborate. He started sleeping out, coming home with excuses that no longer made sense. Little Chrissy, once his biggest fan, began to ask Mia, Where's Daddy? Why doesn't he come home like he used to? Mia tried to shield her daughter, but even Chrissy could sense something was wrong. One evening, while Jack was in the shower, Chrissy accidentally came across his phone. Her innocent curiosity led her to a text that shattered her world. Hi, honey. Come over tonight. In that moment, Chrissy's heart broke into pieces. She knew what it meant, and despite being too young to fully understand the weight of it all, she felt the betrayal deeply. That night, Chrissy couldn't hold it any longer. She confronted Jack. Daddy, 
Why did you lie to us? Who is this honey you're going to see? Jack, caught off guard, tried to deny it, weaving together a flimsy explanation that it was just a misunderstanding. It's nothing, Chrissy. You don't understand. It's work-related. He lied, hoping she would drop it. But Chrissy wasn't a little girl anymore, and she wasn't buying his excuse. A few days later, Mia found undeniable evidence of Jack's affair. It was no longer just a suspicion, it was the truth. Devastated and unable to bear the betrayal, Mia packed her things and left with Chrissy. Jack came home that night to a house echoing with emptiness. Honey, I'm home, he called, but the sound of his own voice was the only response he received. The once warm and lively home was now cold, vacant, and hollow. Jack stood frozen in the doorway, the weight of his choices crashing down on him. He had chased the approval of the world, and in doing so, he had lost everything that truly mattered. In that moment, Jack realized that he had been trying to fit in with a crowd that was never meant to be his. He was born to stand out, to be set apart as a man of God, not to conform to the ways of the world. But in his desperation to be accepted, he had let go of God's blessings and now he was paying the price. Broken and shattered, Jack fell to his knees, weeping before God, asking for forgiveness. He tried reaching out to Mia, pleading for another chance, but her heart had been too deeply wounded. Months passed, and despite Jack's constant apologies and attempts to make things right, Mia's silence remained. A year later, as Jack continued to seek God, healing began to work within him. One Sunday, after a church service, Jack found himself walking down the street, burdened by his past mistakes. That's when he met an old wise pastor who had known Jack since his youth. The pastor, sensing Jack's heavy heart, approached him with kindness in his eyes. Son, the pastor said gently, sometimes God allows us to lose what we cherish most because he has something greater to teach us. You see, Jack, fitting in with the world will always lead you away from your true calling. But God's grace doesn't just leave us with our mistakes. He transforms us through them. Keep seeking Him, and you may find that what you lost was only a stepping stone to something far greater. Those words sparked something within Jack. He had been so focused on the pain of losing Mia and Chrissy that he hadn't seen the bigger picture. God was still at work in his life. Jack threw himself into his faith with more passion and dedication than ever before. He began sharing his story at small gatherings, then in churches, eventually reaching tens of thousands. His testimony became a beacon of hope, warning others not to fall into the same trap of trying to fit in with the world's standards. Months passed, and as Jack continued to grow in his walk with God, something unexpected happened. Mia who had kept her distance, began to see the changes in Jack. She saw his genuine repentance, his renewed dedication to God, and the way he was now living his life honoring his family and his faith. Slowly, her heart began to soften. One day out of the blue, Mia called Jack. It wasn't easy for her, and her words were tentative, but she wanted to talk. Jack, humbled by grace, listened without interrupting. He apologized once again, not just with words, but with the weight of a heart that had been transformed. Mia, though still cautious, agreed to meet him for a coffee. Their conversations became more frequent, and as time passed, something miraculous happened. Mia forgave Jack. It wasn't an overnight process, but little by little, their marriage was restored. Chrissy, who had been deeply affected by the whole ordeal, saw her father change before her eyes. She too began to trust him again. With God's help, their family was reunited. Jack had been forgiven, not only by God, but also by the family he thought he had lost forever. Jack's life became a living reminder to all who heard his story. You were born to stand out, not to fit in. And though the cost of fitting in was great, the mercy of God had brought Jack to a place of true freedom, 
where he no longer sought the approval of men, but the approval of his creator. In that freedom, Jack found the purpose for which he was born, to glorify God, love his family, and lead others to do the same. So today, as we enter into this prayer, let us embrace that divine distinction. Let us thank God for making us different, for giving us a path that's uniquely ours, and for the courage to walk on it boldly. Together, let us lean into his strength, knowing that he who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. You were born to stand out, and in standing out, you magnify the God who created you for such a time as this. And so, to all who can hear my voice, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in humble gratitude, acknowledging your divine craftsmanship in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the unique design you've bestowed upon each of us, reminding us that we were never meant to blend in with the world but to stand out as reflections of your glory. You have fearfully and wonderfully made us with a purpose that goes beyond human understanding. Father, I lift up each person listening to this prayer today, asking that you fill their hearts with the courage to embrace the divine calling you've placed on their lives. Help them, Lord, to walk confidently on the path you've laid before them, even when it doesn't align with the expectations of this world. Father, we ask for strength, the strength to resist the constant pull to conform to the patterns of this world, the strength to stand firm in our identity in Christ, even when it means standing alone. Lord, let our hearts be fixed on you alone and not on the fleeting approval of others. Forgive us, God, for the moments we've sought validation from the world rather than from you. Cleanse us from the desire to fit into places you never intended for us. Help us to seek only your approval, knowing that you've called us to stand out for a greater purpose. Lord, we ask for clarity. Open our eyes to your vision for our lives. Let us see clearly the plans you have for us, and let us be bold in walking them out, even when the way is uncertain. Give us the wisdom to use the gifts you've placed within us effectively, to impact this world in ways that honor you. Father, we know that standing out can sometimes feel like a lonely journey, but we ask for your grace to endure those moments of isolation. Remind us that your presence is always with us, and in you, we find our greatest comfort and peace. God, protect our minds from the lies of the enemy that seek to convince us we must conform to be accepted. Guard our hearts, Lord, and remind us daily that we are chosen and set apart for your glory. When the weight of this calling feels heavy, give us the humility to rely on your strength, knowing that in our weakness, your power is made perfect. Father, I pray for each person listening today. Give them the faith to trust in what they cannot see, the confidence to walk boldly in your plans over their own, and the peace to embrace their uniqueness fully. May they never compromise the values you've instilled in them, but instead, stand firm in their calling, knowing that you've set them apart for something far greater than this world can offer. And so, Lord, we give you praise for every door you've opened and will open. We thank you for making a way where there seemed to be no way. Let every person under the sound of this prayer reflect your light, standing out not for themselves but for your glory, so that their lives may point others to you. Lord, as we walk this path of standing out, let us do so boldly, confidently, and with a heart fully surrendered to your will. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Type. Amen. And then say something to the Lord in the comment section if you are blessed by this video. Also, please help us spread this uplifting message by sharing it with the people you know. And remember to like and subscribe to support this channel. Chosen ones, never dim your light to make others comfortable. Never silence your voice to blend in with the noise of the world. You were called to stand out, to lead, to show the world what it means to live a life set apart for God. And as you walk in that calling, watch as God opens doors no man can shut and paves a way for you that no one can take away.